again. I'm oh, sorry. nope, no worries at all. And you got my phone number in case something happens. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, I mean, what I've done is I put in a uh, a spy bot blocker, in so then in case something weird happens, you never know with me. <laughs> it, it's no, it's weird. Um, even two years ago, when we were started to do this, like the first time I had a guy from the United States Navy on, we had because I had some IT guys that were really good at their stuff, and we had DoD, you know, Defense Department pinging us on a regular basis, because of course, you know, you got one of your Navy missile commanders there. It's like, okay, what's he going to talk about? Because it's because yeah. it's a live broadcast, so. And I haven't had any problems with my machine like all day. Yes, after I was done with you, and today everything's fine. And yet yesterday we had two weird disconnects. So, but who knows? I'm a conspiracy guy. You never know. All right. So how how are you going to try to do this with uh, audio and video? Yeah. So I don't know why the audio on my computer didn't record yesterday. Because yesterday we had two set up. And she deleted the one off the memory card. Right. So I have I have this recording you, and then I have on my computer recording you, and then I'm going to do a backup on my phone just because. Perfect. And I'm I'm doing the same thing over here. I've got something called uh, Skype Recorder that records yeah. audio only because I don't want to. Because if you record video, then it takes up a whole bunch of your processor. So I figured, ah, screw it. But we're going to do it a little differently. I'm not going to do headphones. I'm just going to do it with just me and you over the speakers and everything will be groovy. So where do you want to go first? Um, well, I do, again, just want you to... Who am say, I? Right. Yeah, who you are, right. how you became YouTube famous. All <laughs> right. <clears throat> yes, well... Back before the glory and the fame, uh, I was just known as Mark Sargent, S-A-R-G-E-N-T, from a small yet humble island up in the northwest of the United States called Whidbey, W-H-I-D-B-E-Y. I was born and raised there. Actually, I was born in Seattle because I don't think there were any hospitals back in 68 that you could actually be born on the island. Now, I think you could if you wanted to, but I don't think they recommend it, to be honest. <laughs> It's not like, it's not super rural. It's not like the town blacksmith pulls teeth or anything like that, you know, like that rural. It's not Amish, but uh, it's it's pretty rural. And I was always a conspiracy guy. All, I shouldn't say always. Again, I didn't, because I grew up in a very, very sheltered environment, I did not know about conspiracies until I got to college. And I should really, again, I got to say university more than college because outside of the United States, College is different. It's like when I was up in Canada, universities are universities, but, but colleges are technical colleges, always. They're not considered full academic institutions. So I know down here, you know, we, we, say, we say both. But anyway, I uh, saw JFK in the early 90s, uh, the Oliver Stone's masterpiece, in my opinion, and it was fantastic. And then I knew that conspiracies were possible followed conspiracies pretty regularly, but was not really a tin hat guy. I just knew of them, knew of conspiracies. And then I, I knew, of, I, you know, I, I had an opinion probably on every conspiracy you could ever think of because Flat Earth isn't even really considered a conspiracy in that world. It's considered this fringe, this thing that's so far out there that nobody ever takes it seriously. Why would it? Anyone listening to this now, why would you ever take Flat Earth seriously? The question is, in fact, some of you right now, while you're watching this, are thinking to yourself, this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And you've got to wonder why, right? So you can listen to all sorts of other conspiracies, Pearl Harbor and JFK and 9-11 and the moon landing and all that other stuff. That's perfectly fine. You know, you've got an opinion on it. But Flat Earth, you won't even look at it. And you've got to wonder why. It's because you were shown the globe in your classroom since you were six years old. And then you graduated from, well, I assume you graduated from high school. And in those 12 years, you, you saw the globe for 12 years. That's probably the most uh, religious conditioning you could ever get. So anyway, sorry, I'm off the track for a little bit. So I learned about a whole bunch of conspiracies. And then in the summer of 2014, I just happened to glance 
at a video that was made in Germany about a guy who was talking about the flight routes in the Southern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere only. He goes, and the routes do not make sense in the Southern Hemisphere. He goes, all the connections. First of all, you can't even find direct flights between capital cities, which is unheard of. You know, up here, we can get nonstop flights all we want. You know, it's just a question of price and what time you want to fly. But down there, and I've talked to a corporate travel agent down in the Southern Hemisphere, and they say people complain all the time because you can't get direct flights. In fact, 95, maybe even 98% of the flights in the Southern Hemisphere are connections. They are not direct flights. And the guy went on to say at the very end, he goes, you know, it doesn't make sense unless the world isn't a globe. If it's, if it's a flat disk, then it makes sense. He goes, the routes, the, the, all those connections make sense. Like, okay, that's pretty interesting. And then I followed up with another video by a guy, because there wasn't a lot of stuff out there in 2014, I, by another guy out of Montreal, Canada, a photorealistic painter, who said that there were some NASA people that disclosed to him during a party that GPS, the GPS system really doesn't work in the Southern Hemisphere at all, because not because of distances, and especially down in Antarctica, but because of temp not because of temperature but because of uh it's flat the, the geography that it's that's actually flat and so i with that in mind i go okay that's some pretty pretty interesting stuff i mean it was one of the more interesting things i had heard of in the conspiracy world in a long time it was definitely original everybody's heard of the flat earth but no one no one has heard the logistics of the flat earth how it breaks down it's like okay what exactly are we talking about we talk about cosmic waterfalls where the water you know we've seen all those artist renditions where the water just goes off into space and ships are going off and you're thinking of asgard and thor and all it's like no 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 it's much much more more basic than that so i dug into it and i'm sorry if you hear the the truck in the background hopefully you don't the um i uh I started digging to about for about nine months and at the end of nine months the beginning of 2015 I gave up like a lot of people the the t-shirt reads literally I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk flat earth and so <clears throat> that in mind I woke up on on February 10th I know it very, very vividly and I just said okay I can't do this anymore I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore I would like to. I, I used to, heck, I'm, and you're thinking, wow, this guy's just a nutball, right? It's like, no, no, no. I used to collect antique globes. Literally, that was one of my hobbies. You're going, that's a dumb hobby. It's a boring hobby. It's like, no, no, it's a cool hobby because I'm, I'm into antiques. Totally straight saying that, by the way. Into antiques, antique bookends and antique, you know, I, globes off the spindles. I loved them. I love the globe as an icon. I understand why so many corporations use the globe as an icon. It's where we live, right? It's a nice encapsulated thing. And then, so, so I, but I couldn't do it anymore. I could not prove it anymore. So I made a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues. And I decided to just make it, you know, I woke up that morning, wrote out, I mean, it was some of the clearest writing I've ever done, where it was just paragraph after paragraph and knew exactly where the breaks were, I knew exactly where I was going. And when I got to the end, it's like, okay, time to narrate it. And so I, you know, put on a cheap pair of headphones and, and narrated the whole thing. It's like, well, might as well attach some slides to it. Made a little kind of a poor man's PowerPoint because I didn't have PowerPoint. I, I just used uh, Windows Live Movie Maker, which you can actually turn into a PowerPoint presentation, kinda. Just a series of slides, put it out on the internet, and the first video, I think, was only not even 20 minutes. And did the same thing the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and I made the first seven clues in eight days. And that's how this whole thing started to where after that happened, I had a lot of response from a lot of people. So that's how I got started with it. That's awesome. Yep. Okay. So let's just talk about what you've been up to in terms of the community and just kind of the big things that are happening again, like uh, talk a little bit about the conference you attended and stuff. Sure. My role in the community, just to be clear, yeah, I mean, there's there's people with bigger subscriberships, and there's people that, that do more experiments, and there's people that do activism. I mean, there's you could actually treat this, and this will relate to you pretty well, as a university. If Flat Earth was a university, I would be the freshman recruiter. 
the guy that goes out to the high schools on a, you know you know how these or go to those weird those weird things where a bunch of high schools show up at the same time i don't know if they still do those yeah. where you know and all the universities are represented it's kind of like a career fair but for just for high school students and i would go to these things and i would say flat earth university you know you'll, you'll lose sleep and friends but you'll gain understanding and roll today you know that sort of thing that's that's what my role is that's what i do on a on a daily basis uh i the the clues were the dummies guide to flat earth so and of course by once once i get people in the door to flat earth university you can do anything you want once you get there it's like oh i want to work on advanced maps i'm going to do street activism i'm going to do some testing some physical testing water or land or drones or whatever i'm going to make music i mean and that's really what flat earth university is uh, and the side effect to that, which is what we're doing here, is that I get a lot of interviews. People, when people come in and say, tell me about Flat Earth University. I mean, I know that's not what they say, but you know, that's what it is. Like, tell me about Flat Earth. And I go, okay, here's the nickel tour. You know, I, we walk around campus, you know, it's like, kind of like the orientation, you know, to, yeah, they still do that. So you walk around campus and, and they're just saying, you know, in this building over here, we're doing water tests. And these build, these people over here, they're doing street activism where we pin people on the ground and, and yell flat earth until they say uncle, you know, stuff like that. And because of that, I get to, again, not only do interviews, but I get to do speaking engagements at I don't know, meetups. And in this case, the conference that just happened down in Raleigh, North Carolina, the first flat earth conference in the 241 year history of the United States which was kind of fun. And yeah, that's what I do. I make, a, I still make a lot of videos. I think just pushing, I, I don't know if I'll hit a thousand, what day is it? Seventh. I don't think I'll hit a thousand videos by the time the, the end of this year, but not that that matters, but there's a lot of videos on my channel. And again, a lot of it is introductory. That is for me, that is my role. The lowest common denominator. I have to explain flat earth to somebody in less than five minutes. And I don't even, I, I, you probably heard this or heard me say this in different things. I'm not trying to convince anybody like you right now. I'm not trying to convince you of flat earth. I don't think I could do it in two hours or an hour or an afternoon necessarily. All I have to do is put the seed in your head, much like, and I love movies, which is like why I make movie references, uh, Inception starring uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Just all you have to do is put the seed in their head and that's all, and then let it go. Let's, you know, see what happens because once the idea is in your head, remember, so if I, if I tell you again, you know, steal the line, uh, don't think about elephants, what are you automatically thinking about? You're thinking about elephants. So if I say, do not Google flat earth clues, you know, and I've done that for, for people. I mean, it's, some people think it's reverse psychology, but eh, it's more like triggering the, the taboo aspect, which is, you know, if, if the media ever goes after this things and turns it into a taboo. Yeah, you might as well just put jet fuel on it because that's all anyone says. Like, why, why, why shouldn't we look at flat earth? Because that's what it really, I mean, even now in the conspiracy world, I kind of treat it as uh, something I, I, I jokingly say that the flat earth drug deal, which is, you know, the conspiracy guys like, yeah, man, what are you into? Uh, yeah, I got, I got something for you, man. It's flat, flat earth. Yeah. You know, I don't give this to just anybody, right? You know, you know how the lines go, right? Not that you do drugs, but it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like I got here's some stuff. No, don't do too much, man. Don't do too much. You didn't get it from me, okay? You cool? All right. You know that sort of thing, and that's where it, where it turns out. I mean, conspiracy guys, they know all their conspiracies back and forth, and it's really like a list of drugs. And then flat Earth is something we've all heard about, but nobody's taken. It's like nobody wants to take flat Earth. It's like why? It's like. Dude, it's freaking one. It's ridiculous. And then you hear more about it and you're going, dude, that sounds really scary because when people get into this, you lose sleep for about two weeks. I'm not kidding you. You literally, you don't sleep. You just sit there. You just consume and consume and consume because YouTube has become the most powerful force in media. I don't know why. Well, I know why the, the mainstream media hasn't declared this. It's because that would be them surrendering to it. But that's what YouTube is now. And what it does for conspiracies is... It takes rabbit holes and makes them wider and deeper. So where if you d didn't think you could fall into it before, you, you, you misjudge yourself and oh, you're totally in because Mary, you can, you can bypass advertisements. You can, you can, you can, it's faster than television. You know, forget about ancient aliens, pff, it's nothing. 
You could binge watch Ancient Aliens all you want. YouTube and the conspiracy world? That's monstrous. Anyway, I'm sorry. I am completely off-road at this point. No, that's okay. What, what, what else you got? Um, okay. So, let's see here. Um, yeah, so you kind of talked about, like, how you get your information and connect to your research a little bit. Um, so, let's just go into, like, how do you think that kind of same question as yesterday? Um, that the implementation of the scientific theory and experimentation is going to merge with the Flat Earth community in a more... A bigger magnitude tough to do it, it really really difficult to do because the scientific i mean we use the scientific method all day long and and we're trying to do it from our side but we can't get any in fact i, I may have one lined up for me here next week there's a german television team that's finally got somebody from georgetown university to address it now he and i are not going to go back and forth directly because that's too volatile and i don't even know honestly i don't even know if the guy's going to agree to it because i'm going to throw him a list of questions i've got four, three or four trap questions that scientists just don't know what to do with but that being said we put out the challenge to in fact i i even did my video just recently called the uh, uh, flat earth declaration of war where i said and it sounds more menacing than it is but it's saying look you fly me into any university any academic panel i will sit down just me against any number of people you want at this point i've done so many interviews and i've answered so many questions that at this point look i need i need a bigger challenge i need somebody from the academic field and most of them won't do it because they're afraid of not necessarily losing but not making a good showing Meaning, you remember, this is flat earth. Science should be able to knock out flat earth in two seconds. If you treat it like a boxing round, if, or, you know, boxing. If flat earth isn't knocked out in the first round, I mean, the first minutes of the first round, then everyone immediately starts looking at science and going, okay, uh, why, is, why is flat earth still standing? Why are they still, you know, and the minutes click off and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why are they still standing there? And again, we're doing this now. We're winning, we're winning this fight by attrition at the moment because or forfeiture because science isn't even stepping up to the plate against us i mean if you think neil degrasse tyson could come on comedy central drop a mic say that's gravity and walk off you think that's going to make us go away oh no that's just that's you might as well just be beating on the hornet's nest we're just everyone's getting really riled up about that and now now we've got a public enemy number one which is him um so the scientific community, the mainstream scientific community will probably never merge with flat earth unless there is some sort of disclosure, meaning eventually the mainstream, well, some government's going to have to come out and say, okay, we knew, you know, and I'll, I'll grab the model real quick. We knew <clears throat> that the earth looked like this except for that little thing on top, just to pull it off, that it looked like this since about 1956 and we decided to keep it a secret. That's all we're talking about here. It's it's not as complex as you might think. I mean, yeah, the borders might be a little farther out and the, the dome may not be as high as, as that. I mean, this is like an early model. But the point is, is if you weren't on a globe, if it did look like this, would the government tell you yeah, when they found out? No, of course they wouldn't. The institution is too big. Sorry, that I, I again, I'm going off the weeds, but... Sorry, keep going. This is all great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Done it a few times. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, so going off of that, what do, you, what do you think holds for the future of Flat Earth, especially looking back on the popularity it's gained the pa in the past six months? Uh, right now, the future of Flat Earth is... It's like a juggernaut with no direct path in front of them there's a lot of different paths available there's only two ultimate outcomes though when it comes to flat earth because if this thing gets any bigger it once mainstream not necessarily the mainstream news but once mainstream entertainment embraces it then they've got a real problem like yeah you could make a real i mean people have been toying with a flat earth reality show now for a couple of years because they they know the numbers are huge uh let me let me give you the past and the future real quick uh, if you back in 2015 if you went into youtube and typed in flat earth you got to sort by upload date to get the the the, uh, the greatest algorithm 
you may have gotten 50,000 search results. You do the same thing this morning and sort by upload date, you get about 18 and a half million, which is a massive, massive uptick. I mean, that sort of growth is beyond exponential. It's, it's huge. So that being said, eventually some production and we're again you know the greed the money from the, the producers that are out there you can't you, they look for anything that's in the internet it's like okay can we make money off of this and when they see this now it's like okay once we once we turn it into a reality show well then you're allowing people to talk about it and you can only let people talk about this too lo so long before eventually you get to a point where lawyers get involved meaning okay we've been giving nasa 20 20 billion dollars a year right that was their budget last year and if you adjust the dollars going all the way back we're talking what trillions in in adjusted dollars where's that money been going exactly and we're talking huge companies nasa member is just a collection of parts from oh i don't know general dynamics and lockheed martin and boeing and uh, guys like that, big, big, big corporations, military contractors. And those guys, we're, we're talking about the biggest class action lawsuit in the history of anything. AIG, the financial crisis in 2007, pff, it's nothing compared to this. This is literally too big to fail. So eventually you're going to have to let them off the hook. That's what I'm talking about here. That's th if this, if Flat Earth moves forward as, as fun and as wonderful and as mind blowing as it is, Eventually, people are going to have to get down to the lies, the, the, the deception part of it. And I try not to I paint the doom and gloom picture. It's like, look, people lie all the time. You know, we, we know this. You know, the, the people lie for a living. Don't, don't think. I know you live in a, an academic world, but there's deception everywhere you go. Right? You know, there's lawyers, politicians, used car salesmen. They all lie for a living. Enron happened. That was a big deal. The, a, the AIG thing, that was just a big lie. Any big scan, I mean, look, look at the news. You pull up any news page. I don't care if it's CNN, Fox, NBC. It's all just a series of lies that people are getting in trouble for. Who's getting away with it and who's not? I don't care if you're in the world of sports, you're in the entertainment world. I mean, what's all the stuff that's happening now? What's the Me Too, that thing? Oh my God. <laughs> Where, where, where's that going to go? I mean, pretty much any guy that's ever done anything, and I, I don't, you know, I side with the women on, in all cases. Any guy that's ever made a really, really bad, horrible decision along those lines, and they're in power now, they, they should be running. The, you know, they should be calling their lawyer and just tracking down people and just settling in advance. You know, just throwing money at the problem, because otherwise you're a target right now. Uh, the point is, is that people lie. It's, and so do not think that science is an institution, and I, I, I got to get this across. Don't think for a second that science as an institution would not lie to you because they would. They're, they're just men. Look, again, what I, what I told you before, you know, there's a reason why women, uh, all the bank tellers are women. It's because women don't really commit crimes. Men commit almost all of them all the time and they can be corrupted. Don't think for a second that science is any different from an academic institution, is any different from a corporation, isn't any different from a government. If it is not in their best interest and they have the power to cover it up, they will do so. Uh, we only know about the huge mistakes. Look, when I make a mistake, and, and I'm again, I don't hate science. I know I've declared this war on mainstream science. I don't hate science. Look, light bulbs, air conditioning, microwave ovens, they seem to be pretty good products, even though most people can't even tell you how the microwave works. But when it comes to other things which they rush to market, they get themselves into trouble. Uh, lead paint, lead gasoline, uh, DDT, uh, asbestos, uh, the cigarette, it's a cigarette company. We still sell cigarettes to this day, right? And yeah, we pulled them out of, uh, of television and radio and stuff like that. We try not to market it to kids, sort of. But at the same time, why are cigarettes still out there? We know they kill people all day long. It's because they make so much money. And one out of five people, it turns out that, not to go off too much on a tangent, one out of five people still smoke. And no, no offense if you smoke. It's just like you had a one, you had a one in five chance of smoking. It, people, apparently, it's, it's a hardwired thing. That number will never drop below one in five. It's just a genetic thing. It's like they're, but the people that smoke are also potentially addicted to a whole bunch of other things. Sorry. Let's throw that out for a second. Um, mean the the what was the initial question? <laughs> um, where it's going in the future? 
Right, right, right. It, it, yeah, glass half full or glass half empty. Would it, it would be wonderful if it could be disclosed in a way that would unify the world and create a new golden age. It, Flat Earth is that powerful. Meaning if you show people the, the true shape of the world and say, look, you're not alone. That's the big subtext here. That's why Flat Earth is gaining as much momentum as it, as it has. It's because it's not this sinister thing where it's a secret that you're burying in the desert like JFK, right? Flat Earth, the underlying subtext is you're not alone. Not saying that it's a handprint of God. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to completely slam the atheist, but it's really tough to be an atheist in the flat earth world. Meaning, at the very least, there's a technology that's far above ours that's been running this place, and we've been in it for whatever purpose. You know, what, whatever this place may be. Is it an entertainment? Is it a reality show? Is it an experiment? Are we just somebody, something on somebody's lab desk? I don't know exactly but whatever it is it was constructed very very deliberately and that also means remember that you're not alone you're not this this tiny little speck flying around this endless vacuum of space you are in a very intimate environment that was designed just for you and the civilizations previous to us and the ones to come and remember treat treat this kind of like an education for me it kind of feels like school doesn't it i mean Treat it like a, uh, a high school or, or college, or, sorry, university, where you, uh, you have seen, when, when you get to be a senior, eventually you got to go. Like, yeah, hey, we loved you here for the last four years, but you can't stay here because we got another freshman class coming in. So you don't have to stay, you know, you don't have to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. That line. It's like, okay, you're gone. And that's what it kind of feels like. There was, there was a civilization, no doubt. I mean, look at the sunken cities off of Japan, the sunken cities off of India, the Bosnian pyramids, Bimini Road. How re old really are the pyramids? I, I, was, I was there. I looked at them. They, are not, they were not built by the Egyptians living in Cairo now. I can guarantee you that. Uh, take all those things into account. We, this is not, we were not the first people to rent this apartment. Someone was here before us, and eventually, when we go, somebody's going to come in after us. Uh, what version are we? I don't know, version 7, version 8. Uh, then you start looking back, it's like, okay, who else could be in here with us? You know, because remember, this, this sort of thing wouldn't be a one-off either, by the way. There'd be more than one of these. Because why would you, you know, it's not necessarily disposable. All you have to do is rearrange the continents and move the civilization somewhere else, and you can start, and you can, in fact, it makes it much more intriguing if there are older civilizations remnants of them so why not you know why you know people say well what does this do for flying saucers and aliens and stuff like that it's like well who says they're from mars and venus what if they're just older versions of us that are hanging around just kind of spending time here with us although under direct orders and not to steal from star trek the prime directive not to interfere directly go off on a quick little tangent <laughs> What's the most famous UFO sighting in, in history? Everyone thinks, oh, it's, it's Roswell. It's no, it's not Roswell. Look it up if you get a chance. 1561 Nuremberg event. This is amazing. Three huge factions over the city for an entire hour, duking it out for no apparent reason. It's weird. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out if you get a chance. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. So. I love aliens. So. <laughs> oh, look, have you ever even heard of that? Um, I think I have heard of that, but I didn't know the details about how they're... Look, oh my god, look it up if you get a chance. Real quick, the 1561 Nuremberg event, bright, bright, crisp spring morning in April, right? Not a cloud in the sky, two factions show up first, just start, you know, leveling each other, flying aircraft carriers, fighters deployed the whole nine yards for a full hour, right? People are eating their, their, their toast and their schnitzengluben. You know, and sitting there going, holy smokes, what's going on, right? Full hour to the point where the sketch artists are out there. And there's no cameras in 1561. They're sitting there sketching the whole thing out going, I mean, detailed. I mean, front page of their newspaper. And this is one of the major cities in Europe. And then finally, after an hour, and ancient aliens didn't even touch on this last part, which would kind of bug me. You got to wonder why, but I know why. And that is a third faction showed up. A single, giant, black, angular craft, you know pulls up between the two of them right one ship big and these two just take off and it's like eh, we're out of here right and the black ship sits for a while and then leaves right do you know how many questions that thing raises okay one who are the two factions fighting in the first place right why were they fighting over a major city 
What's the hierarchy? What, what was going on between them? Okay, who are the third guys? That's the bigger question. That's why ancient aliens didn't bring it up. It's like, who, who are the third? who's that third group that showed up? And why'd they take off? Were they the cops? Were they the UN? Obviously, the first two groups weren't supposed to do it. Was this a, just a gang fight, like between the sharks and the jets? I know that dates me. That's West Side Story. But, you know, and, and then you're thinking, okay, but my biggest question is an hour response time? what the hell took you so long to get there? It's like these guys, you know, did they find a place in the map where it's like, hey, nobody's watching this this area. Did they find some sort of blank zone? But there's no coverage here. We can totally square off. It's like, oh, okay. It was weird. But, uh, and the look at the newspaper. I mean, the 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 print, the artist rendering of it is beautiful. You know, they show the the two different factions. One are shaped like kind of crosses, like, like X fighters. The other are spherical. And then, of course, the big giant black ship. No clouds in the sky, big sun. People are going, oh, it's all sun dogs. I'm going, sun dogs? <laughs> For a full hour with three complete separate factions? And it rattled them so much, they thought it, well, obviously, remember, science fiction didn't exist back then either. So they thought it was a religious event? Come on. Not a chance. Anyway, sorry. That's my little... That's awesome. I'm going to look that up. Definitely look that up. It's, it's <laughs> totally worth your time. And remember, and that's one of those things that's kind of squelched. Everyone talks about the small stuff. It's like Roswell. Roswell, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm sure it was a real event, obviously. And But even before Roswell, there was the 1899 Aurora, Texas event, where a ship just blew through a weather vane and crashed into the ground, and the city just kind of took all the pieces and threw it down a well. Because it's like, oh, uh, let's not do Because what are you going to do in 1899? Like, nobody knew anything. Aliens wasn't even a word, wasn't even a concept. So, sorry. No, that's awesome. <laughs> what else? What else you got? Sorry, I'm 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 on a rant. I just had lunch and I'm drinking sugar water. <laughs> I think I need that sort of energy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I get excited. By the way, I there's a I get excited when I talk about flat Earth and stuff that's tied to it because it is so motiv motivating. Uh, everybody in the flat Earth community, you got to remember one of the reasons this thing resonates so well is because it affects your your whole backstory meaning uh it's kind of like telling somebody uh, let's give a good version uh it's kind of like telling somebody you're adopted only better right so if i went up because people say what does it matter if it's, you know it's round or it's a sphere if it's if it's flat it's like you know my wife still hates me and my kids don't listen to me i go to go my stupid job in the morning what would it matter right I'm going you short-sighted little thing you, you, you don't get it. It's like it doesn't matter until you start believing it. So if I went, I told you, no offense if you're adopted, by the way. If I said, you're adopted. I think you're adopted. And, you, and you're going, whatever. And this is denial. You know, the five stages of, of denial. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Five stages of acceptance. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and finally exception, acceptance. And the first one's always, you know, first denial and anger uh, just go hand in hand. You're just like, whatever, dude, I'm, I'm not adopted. Stop talking about it. Or I'm going to punch you. And eventually, all of a sudden, it doesn't matter until all of a sudden you start believing it. And then the second you start believing it, it's like, wait, maybe I am adopted. The second that happens, you start revisiting every conversation you ever had with your family going all the way back to what? Kindergarten. The, and imagine that but with the world. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about ripples in time. It's it's going back through the conditioning that you've, you've had. It's like, wait, I remember that globe when I was six years old. It was just sitting there and I was told it was a globe. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That globe, that, you know, you, all of a sudden you, you realize this globe has been haunting you for a long, long time. Let me, let me give you some subtext for, for those listening to this. Things you can test right now you know you right now in your classroom i mean i don't advise testing it right now it's like fire burns yeah don't start a fire in class fire burns water is wet you drop something it falls to the the floor it appears to be some sort of magical force we call gravity even though science can only tell you what it does they can't tell you what it is well they can try to tell you what it is these are things you can test right now but when it comes to the shape of the world this is something you are told period this is something you're told you don't have spaceships you don't have cars from the jetsons you can't fly up there and check it out yourself. In fact, there's only been 500 people, all military, by the way, that have even claimed to have gone up high enough to see what the shape of the world looks like. So how do you know it's a globe? And eventually you're going to say, well, science told us and science wouldn't lie. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. I mean, you got to remember NASA is DOD. 
Department of Defense. They are uniquely military, founded on the still burning embers of the Nazi war machine. The head of NASA, the guy that started the whole thing, was Werner von Braun. If he wasn't as smart as he was, he would have been hung for war crimes because he had developed the V-2 rocket. Uh, yeah, just because they wear white uniforms, don't carry guns and smile for the camera, doesn't mean you can let them off the hook. It doesn't mean you should believe everything they say. They're still the U.S. military. And if you think I'm exaggerating here, let me give you a quick example. We didn't have uh, spy planes. The United States did not have spy planes. Literally, they didn't exist until one was shot down over Russia. And then it's like, oh, okay, we have spy planes. It's like, okay, the SR-71 spy plane, the second generation, went through its inception all the way to its retirement, and nobody even knew it existed until they decommissioned it. And the Air Force, one of the greatest press conferences of all time, in my opinion, where the, the Air Force general, he's sitting there in front of the press. Oh, yeah, they were basically showing off. It's like, it's like oh, yeah, by the way, we're decommissioning the spy plane. It's like, wait, what spy plane? Oh, yeah, this one over here. And, and then the, the reporter says, well, what are you going to use to replace it? Right? He goes, oh, nothing. Like, of course you can replace it with something. It's like, it's got to remember, this is the military. The military lies about all, to this date, they still will not acknowledge that Area 51 even exists. Even though with high cam, you know, high def, te uh, sorry, high def cameras, you can go up to mountaintops. They bought pretty much all the real estate around it now to even keep that from, but you know, the technology keeps outpacing it to where we, we, there's been television shows. You can zoom in. It's a massive base. They fly in people from Vegas every day and there's signs out there. What do you think they're protecting? It's like, well, we authorized to use lethal force and you know, you can't drive here. Well, what's on here? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so don't think that the military can't keep secrets. This one happens to be bigger than most. Uh, the other thing, I'm sorry, real quick, is that uh, this thing's so big, a lot of, a lot, I'm, I, I'm thinking of questions that people might have on your side, which is, people say, well, there would have to be so many people involved. We're talking all of NASA and all of uh, every pilot and every scientist. Like, no, 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 no. None of those people have to know. It's need to know. In fact, there is no better example of need to know than this. Meaning no pilots have to know 98% uh, of the wrench turners at NASA. They don't have to know only the telemetry guys and the, 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 the bosses of the telemetry guys. So if you're making a fuel system, if you're making part of a capsule, whatever, no, that's fine. You don't have to know anything. Why, why would you? It's uh, you just sign your, in fact, the astronauts, I don't think even know the whole story. The astronauts now, the Apollo astronauts did, but everybody now they're just, you know, you sign your disclosure agreements and they say, okay, you're not even allowed to ask us why. It's above your pay grade, which is how they can get away smiling, floating through the ISS, which is not real, you know, flying it with their khakis and their polo shirts and their socks. Where's the shoes? You know, where I don't don't get me started on the ISS. You, you want to look up, sorry, a little quick little jab at the ISS because I know you're short for time. Your presentation can't run forever. If you, if you leave this in here, all you have to do is look up ISS hairspray. That's all you have to do. Nobody should ever have long hair in space. There's no reason for it at all. You treat it like a swimming pool. And yet their answer was to perm the hair of the women that had long hair. Perm them, like Bride of Frankenstein, perm them. Not put it back in a ponytail, not put a hat on, not shave it. Nobody should have hair in space. I'm sorry, it's, that's, that's military 101. And yet they don't do it, so sorry. No, what, else, what else you got? Um, I'm actually gonna go over. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna pull out my script, and okay, let's just start talking about. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, uh, let's just talk about um some of the importance of being skeptical and how it kind of led you to where you're at, um, and what advice you would give to somebody. Please. Sure. Uh, look, question, at the end of every one of my videos that I, well, I shouldn't say every one of them, but at least the clues and a lot of the shows I've done is question everything. Don't take everything at face value. The saying that I live by, or one of the sayings, I, I love sayings, I love quotes, sound bites, mm -hmm. which is trust everybody or trust everyone, but count your change. And that, that no truer words, especially in the United States. So look, give people the benefit of the doubt, but don't put every bit of trust you've got in them. Uh, we all know, look, it is, again, it is a world of deception. People 
should be skeptical of certain things. Don't, uh, George Carlin once said, I shouldn't say once, he said it a lot, actually. It's one of his favorite sayings, which was, don't believe anything the government tells you. Always try to read between the lines. If there's a story, if it's in the mainstream media, there's a reason why the story's out there. You know, aside from the generic stuff, like so, like some celebrities getting a divorce. Who cares? The rest of it, though, is very political. Nothing, in fact, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, one of the, the great presidents of the United States who led us through World War II, he said that um, uh, nothing in politics happens by accident. You know, everything is very deliberate, very calculated. So, look, c corporations will bend the rules and lie for their stockholders. Uh, governments will bend the rules and lie to paint the picture. Don't don't forget that even, uh, oh, wasn't even last year, I think 2016, there were more than, there's one more than, uh, the education system in the United States was trying to remove slavery and the atomic bombs on Japan from the textbooks because it didn't reflect on America too kindly. It's like, really? I mean, the atomic bombs, yeah, you might be able to pull that off because the, the, the Japanese population in the United States isn't that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a pretty small minority. But how in the world are you going to pull out slavery? <laughs> how, how is that going to... And this was not a joke. They were seriously trying to do this. Yeah, that, that was not going to go go anywhere. It was, was not going to not gonna fly. People protect their self-interest, um, even with little things. If you don't think the big things can be done, let's think of a little thing. Uh, here's something annoying that's always bugged me over the years. Um, pennies. Do you, you know, pennies are worthless, right? We all know pennies are stupid. You, you know, get, take a penny, give a penny, every convenience mart. There's penny things in pretty much every store. People just throw, in fact, I literally go out of my way. If anyone ever gives me pennies for change, I just throw them into the street immediately in a parking lot. So if you find a penny in the parking lot, you pick up, it's probably from me. I have thrown away thousands of pennies over the years. It just drives me insane. And you say, well, why are pennies? They, they want to get rid of it for a long time and just leave the nickel, right? Do you know why the pennies are still here? Take a guess. Any, any, any um, wild thought of why the pennies are still freaking here? I don't know. I think it's, well, isn't it because our, like, our thing is translated to like a 0.5 of a cent, right? That's not bad. That's not yeah. bad. No, no, no. I mean, computer-wise, they could, you're right, from a, from a monetary standpoint, they could do it in two seconds. They could fix this. No, the reason why the pennies are still here is because of a very, very, very small group called the Lincoln Historical Society. That's it. The people that worship the, the deeds of Abraham Lincoln. Literally... Every time, and it happens like, apparently every year. It's like, it's like look, we're going to get rid of the penny. The historical society steps in and it's like, no, how dare you disparage the name of Abraham Lincoln, one of the greats. He's on Mount Rushmore, for God's sakes. <laughs> and, and people say, well, he's got, you know, so is George Washington. You know, you try to compare the two. They're considered like two of the, the greatest presidents of all time. It's like, yeah, but Abraham Lincoln has the $5 bill. He doesn't need the penny. It's up. But George Washington has the $1 bill and he has the quarter. So unless you have another coin to give to Abraham Lincoln, we're never letting this happen. And this has been going on since the 90s. Oh 20 God. years. That is a, that's the power of what a small group can do to protect their self-interest. Right? Imagine what can be done on a larger scale. What we're talking about here as far as skepticism. All right, here's a perfect example. Because people say, well, you know, I, I should be skeptical about things. But you're talking about lies. That, we're talking about levels of deception. What are you willing to believe? Are you believing there's some lies? Do you believe there's bigger lies? Or do you believe there's a whole bunch of lies? That's really what conspiracy guys are, or conspiracy people, is that they believe in that there's potentially deception everywhere. And sometimes it happens where you least expect it. Look for the, the, the Virgin Mary thing that I gave you yesterday, which was, okay, let's say they found a scroll that said the Virgin Mary's name was actually Susan. Would they tell everybody and change all the books to adjust for the Virgin Susan? No, no, they wouldn't. The narrative has been along so far now that they're, they're, we're not writing, rewriting all this stuff. It's like, we're just not going to tell them there was a Susan. And it makes you think how many stories, you know, that weren't told. And not to mention, oh, I don't know, why weren't there any canonized book of the Bible, books of the Bible that were named after women? Sorry, going off in my pro-woman thing. Imagine that in the scientific community. 
You've been preaching the globe for 25 generations. And then all of a sudden, in the 1950s, you get a rocket. You can go up high enough to take pictures of what the Earth looks like. If the Earth doesn't look like a globe, do you tell people? No, of course you don't. It's, it is too, there's too many, the ripples, the shock waves would be massive. You're not going to take those chances academically. All, all, all the university books that would have to be just ripped out of the shelves and, and redone uh, economically, the world markets. You know, I mean, for God's sakes, if, if Trump gets impeached, think of what happens to the world markets. You know, they, they will actually, there will be a huge effect on the world markets. Not just one guy who it was, just, it was a stupid election, right? And this one guy. Imagine what happens if they tell people, oh, yeah, by the way, it's not a globe anymore. Oh, my God. You, you literally have to suspend the markets for months until they figure out what that means to the economies of the world. Uh, and then, of course, the other one, which is spiritual, which is all, you know, eight out of every 10 people in the world still belong to one form of religion or another. So what happens to those people when you tell them that, oh, yeah, by the way, there's a creator? What do you think happens then? You know, and, and we're not saying that it's, you know, handprint of God, intelligent design type stuff. We're talking, well, well, this place was built. What do you think they're going to think? They're going to, a lot of them are going to latch on us. Well, obviously the person that built it was God. Obviously. You know, it's like, well, are you sure? Because God, God could have subcontracted out the work. So maybe, you know, are you really going to, you're going to give those people, I know it's 2017 and we probably wouldn't go into the dark ages of the crusades or any of those other fun, memorable events that we've had in our history, but you never know. You never know what, what they, so those things in, in mind, sorry, leading up to being <clears throat> suspicious and should you be skeptical of things? Yeah, you should be skeptical. Take everything at half face value meaning if how should i put this don't you don't necessarily have to believe that the people are lying to you but people protect their own look i when i was president of my hoa you know small little hoa in colorado for seven or eight years i bent the rules why because i could <laughs> And, and didn't tell the people I was, I was like, look, we're just going to take care of these things. We don't have to. We're not going to get a committee involved. We're just going to do it. What power corrupts. Always has, always will. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. And we're talking about an institution. <clears throat> science has become its own religion. Yes, science creates some wonderful things for us, but it is corruptible. They can be bought and they will take liberties. Uh, what I said in the clues about the core of the earth, for example, the core of the earth is a perfect, you know, it's like. What's the cross section of the earth? What does the earth, what does the, what does the cross section of the earth look like? Well, it's these bands of red and orange and yellow and white. It's like really perfect bands, exactly a thousand miles thick, each one of them. What's the deepest hole you've ever drilled? It's a thousand miles, a hundred miles. Cause you remember if it's only 1% of the 4,000 miles, supposedly you get to the, to the center, that's 40 miles. You know, the deepest hole ever drilled eight miles. That's it. The Germans and the Russians worked on it forever. In fact, the Russians, I think, worked on it for 20 years. Could not get past eight miles, no matter what they did. The, the bits just kept turning into slag. And you're going, well, it's molten. It's a molten core. I'm going, yeah, it, there's something down there, no question. But you can't tell me what the core of the Earth looks like. Can't do it. You, 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 if, it what they did was back in the day, here's the difference. Here's where science takes huge liberties. Here's where your skepticism should be there. Again, be skeptical of everything, including science. Back in the day, they show you the, the core of the earth and then the bottom in small print, they said, oh yeah, by the way, we're extrapolating, we're expanding. We don't know exactly what's going on down there, but we're just gonna put this in small print. And then after a while, they just took that small print away. Well, that's a huge step because now you're anyone that looks at it, I'm nine years old. Hey, that's what the core of the earth is. These guys said so. I'm now in high school. That's what the core of the earth looks like. They said so. They have no idea what the core of the earth looks like. Multiply that by pretty much everything. So don't just, yes, be skeptical of everything. Don't, I'm not saying that you have to go up in space just to prove it, but until you show me evidence of what's up there that isn't hacked up military edited footage that's just atrocious production value on a regular basis. I mean, we fill in the gaps again with science fiction movies. Always have. You know, we, we, people don't remember that the, that for literally 43 years, there was only one blue marble picture taken of earth from 1972 up until two summers ago. Well, by the time you release this, it'll be 2018. So we'll just say 2015, summer of 2015. 
everything else. I mean, no, no, even to this day, even now, 2018, coming up, 2018, where you there is no footage of the Earth rotating on its axis with the Earth, with the, with the weather morphing simultaneously. It's nowhere to be found. There is no footage of any astronaut. I don't care what Russia Today shows you. That was a bunch of crap. Where any astronaut outside of a spacecraft turning his camera around 180 degrees or further. And that's going all the way back to Mercury and Gemini and Apollo and Soyuz and all that. It would have happened on accident. That, in fact, would have been the first thing you would have done on the moon. But you can't do it. Because if you do, you give away your production techniques. And it's clever. Anyway, sorry. My, I'm, I'm ranting again. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> <laughs> So I, and I know you're just absorbing and I don't know how much of this stuff you're going to use, but uh, I'm not trying to necessarily convert you. This is just one of my spiels. I've done, oh, this, yeah. a, done this a lot. I'm like, I've been, I've been looking at it since August. Oh, so you've been in a little while. Yeah, because I started going to those uh, meetup groups just to see what it was about and yeah. then just get my mind picked out and stuff. But, you know, I'm not like, like you said, once you start being like, oh, no, like that can't be right and then you look at maybe three clues and you're like well those shouldn't be able to stand you know right. they shouldn't be able to stand but they, they should which is why i'm like i just i want research and i want oh i know i want people to look into it but i know no no it's it's <laughs> it's good it's good to be skeptical and let me let me throw this in there before eventually we wrap up which is look don't believe anything that i'm saying to you don't and i'm not just talking to you i'm talking to anybody that might be listening to this don't take why, why would i you know I'm, I'm, be skeptical of everybody else except me no of course not i'm not going to be hypocritical which is don't take my word for it do your own research look into it yourself this is not secret information where you have to go to a deep dark archive part of the web and you know in the middle of the night it's like holy smokes i found it wait is somebody at my door is my phone ringing you know that sort of thing you once you start looking into this what happens is you go about it by trying to disproving it you'll go you'll look it's like well nasa all i have to do is start looking at the the nasa photos and the nasa footage and the iss footage and crap like that the more you look into it the more you'll find little inconsistencies like the iss hairspray like the fact that the iss has hatches that they never shut or the fact that nobody ever puts on a spacesuit while they're inside the ISS, even though a, a meteorite the size of a nickel could take the whole thing out. Or that the power of the vacuum on the outside of that is so strong that the ISS should just burst, you know, like a, like a water balloon. And the thing, or all the CGI crap that they use in it. And that's, that's just the interior shots. They're, they're having a hard time just doing those. The exterior shots, they just focus on like one thing and never move the camera. And it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's no stars. We, we, we won't talk about the stars. And it's like, what? Why? And, and all, 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 all the satellites that are supposedly flying below them that they never, ever show. I mean, there should be satellites all the time. Or, I don't know, little things like how we have annual meteor showers and yet no satellites ever get hit by them. We, we released that movie recently. We fill the gaps in with movies. We assume things because the, the movie with uh, Sandra Bullock and George Clooney, which was called Gravity, right? The whole premise was a satellite got hit, spun around, hit another satellite, hit another satellite, and then eventually the whole thing turned into this wall of metal that took out their space station and then she had to fight for her life. The question is, why hasn't that happened by now? Meaning, because, yeah, you once a satellite's damaged, you can't retask it. You can't just realign it. It's going to run into other satellites. That's what's going to happen. And yet, all these meteors, when, when's the last time you were, it's like, you read a headline, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, CNN satellite got smacked by a meteor the size of a grapefruit, and it's not going to be doing anything anymore. And, you know, wouldn't that disrupt service? And yet, you have these annual meteor showers, you'd think there'd be satellites running for their lives, and they don't. Nobody cares. Nobody seems to care about these meteor showers. Like, how, how does that happen? And that's just one of so many things that's out there. It's like, you just keep looking and keep looking and keep looking. And the more you want to believe in the globe, the more you realize you're in trouble. You, you just don't, there isn't enough there. You, it's like you're walking into a warehouse labeled space evidence, right? And it's full of boxes and you keep opening these boxes and nothing but just a couple pieces of packing popcorn. And you just keep opening it more and more boxes. Like there's nothing here. You just assumed that the warehouse was full of stuff. And again, let me, let me, sorry. Let me, I know we got to wrap this up eventually. Let me throw this, I, I will throw you my trap question. 
Here's a tr is the question I will ask astronauts if I ever finally get to them to talk to me. Remember the thing I just did with the the London group, the Good Morning UK. They um the I, the astronaut I was being I was supposed to talk to was named Terry Verts V I R T S. I mentioned his name what half a dozen times in that interview, and he would not address me would not talk to me because eventually and, and even when I brought up the blue marble question of why it took so long 43 years for him to take pictures of the earth uh, you know even the, the host you know diverted that one so that Terry wouldn't have to answer it but the trap question which I'm waiting you know if I ever get the chance especially if it's a, if it's on stage if I finally get to do one on stage the trap question goes something like this and feel free to, to use this it's real easy are the Van Allen radiation belts deadly yes or no that's the question it's super easy and the reason why it's a trap is that in a flow chart it always loops back on itself meaning okay they say yes they are deadly i go fantastic they're deadly so how did apollo 8 i'm uh, sorry apollo 11 through apollo 17 make round trips through them to the moon and back nobody died nobody got radiation poisoning nobody even got cancer without any shielding you got to remember here that it's the only things that can stop radiation uh, at the, when you're at the dentist is that lead blanket thing they make you wear. And if you the really expensive version is gold. Gold is twice as dense as lead. Most people don't know that because how many people have that much gold? So if lead and gold are very, very, very heavy, that's the last thing you would ever, ever put on the top of a capsule because you're basically you're not going to put an anchor on the top of a rocket. It throws off the ballistics. So they only used aluminum and plastic. So how they get through the Van Allen belts? They didn't. They never went through them. So you can come back and say, well, no, they're not deadly. They're not deadly. Oh, oh, really? Okay, good. So you can go look it up right now and just go into Google and type in Orion Trial by Fire. It's on the NASA.gov website. It's a movie, or I'm sorry, a little television thing they made specifically for that. And they went into detail on how the Van Allen belts are so deadly that they can't even test capsules to go with people in them because they can't figure out how to solve the radiation problem. It's like, what do you mean solve the radiation problem? You already did it. You're, in fact, you did it 50 years ago, and you did it flawlessly without a single problem, unless you all of a sudden forgot that technology, which has never happened in the history of technology, of how to do something. Unless you forgot this, then, then how is this? And this isn't even an old. You think, well, no, it's probably a video from the 80s. No, no, this is 2014. End of 2014, this video was made. And it's still there, it's still there now on the website. You don't have to even go to YouTube. Just go straight to the NASA website and find it. So you can see where it's a trap, right? Oh, so yeah. it's like, oh, if it's deadly, how'd you get through it? If you say it's not deadly, well, your boss has said it was deadly. So now you're screwed because either way, you're going to have to answer the question, which is how did you get all those astronauts through the Van Allen belts if they were going to kill you? And it's like, eh, they, yeah. they won't. There's nothing, there's no astronaut that can answer this question. It's indefensible. And I don't know what, you know, if they'll allow me to, if, if, if I, I'm dying to figure out if, you know, the only reason I didn't ask it on that UK thing was it was my first international, you know, like a live feed. And it was like, remember, I was coming in through Skype, like I am here, which is like, you know, they've got their finger on the button. They kill me. You know how that goes. It's like, click. It's like, I don't know what happened to Mark Sargent, the flat earther. Oh, he must have been picked up by a helicopter. You know, they could have just made up anything. So he's mm -hmm. taken by a UFO. Anyway, sorry. Anything no, else? Like, great. I've never, ever heard that addressed, like, in the flat earth. What? The community or whatever. That question. The Van, well, the Van, the Van Allen belts have been addressed, but not it's not a favorite of most people because it does, does that prove flat earth? No, it doesn't. Does it absolutely put into question the Apollo program? Oh, yeah, you bet it does. Yeah. Because what they did was, and I've said this in different things, you probably haven't, I said it a bunch of times in, in the stuff I've done, where Van Allen, I think they shot themselves in the foot. They announced that the belts existed in 59. And then later, when Kennedy came around, he was the one that says, oh, yeah, we're going to go to the moon and back, right? And it's like, okay. Then they had to go back to Van Allen. I mean, you know, this, this press releases were pretty, you know, you can look it up in the newspaper. And they had, it's like, okay, how are they going to get past it? And you know what Van Allen said? We're going to go real fast. Literally his answer. We're going to get up enough speed to where it's not going to be in it that long. It's like, yeah, but our best speed is about at 17,000 miles an hour. And you're saying it's about 60,000 miles thick. That's about three hours each way. 
assuming it's it's the same so your your answer is just to floor it that's that's how you get past it and i mean that was the only thing you could say but back in the 50s you could get away with that it's like you get away with that answer it's like who's going to check it who's going to question it? there's no internet wasn't even so far off no one is even going to compare notes so people are going oh, okay sure why not and and besides they made it right it's sort of like the ends kind of justify the statement